um, Doris Blocker and my role is I'm the um, director of Fenton EMS or Central Area Ambulance, whichever way you want to. My name is Cameron Giddings. Um, I am an RN here at KRHC. Shortly after I graduated in 2011, I started running with Algona EMS as a paramedic. And then um, I went to Des Moines, worked there in the ER for a while, moved back up here in about 2015, joined my local ambulance service in Titanka, run volunteer there, continue to run PRN and volunteer here in Algona, and then of course the emergency room here at KRHC. I took the EMT class when I was a senior in high school and then I'm actually still on Lakota's crew. I just don't make it there very often. Um, more when they have like summer activities. And then I've been on the Fenton crew since I moved there, so 17 years. Um, it started as actually my parents both did it. So my dad took the EMR class when I was like probably five or six. And then a couple of years later, my mom took the EMT class. So it's just something I grew up with. I mean, work-life balance is what it is. And being a volunteer, especially in Algona, is work. Um, Algona runs a ton of calls and trying to find a balance in those is really tough. Now, for those of us in the smaller communities like Titanka, it's easier to find that balance, but it's still really tough to try to balance the amount of time you spend on calls and training and supporting your department um, while also maintaining your full-time job and your family. Biggest challenges mostly are um, daytime coverage. So the old way was um, we would always have a backup crew that would get paged out. So if there was a call, let's say in Fenton and during the daytime, no one's home, they would wait 10 minutes to page out the next crew, which would be Whittemore. So then like Whittemore has same, kind of the same thing. You know, they have a little more volunteers than we do that work in town. So if they didn't respond, then you'd have another 10 minutes before like Algona or somebody else would get paged out. So that's 20 minutes waiting before they even drove 20 minutes to come help. So it always helps because you have somebody coming at all times. So if there isn't anybody around, someone's on their way. If there is, and you need help right away, you don't have to wait that extra 10 minutes for them to leave to say, hey, I need more help than what I can do. Recruiting and getting people to actually go through the whole process are two different things. Um, I know I have people that are interested, but like example is the classes generally fall during harvest time. And when you're in a rural area, it's hard for them to take a class. Um, but I don't think any of us who aren't directly involved in EMS have a good understanding of just everything that goes into it to get that patient out of their home, into an ambulance, to the hospital, and to the other hospital where they go. Um, yeah, you only run a few calls a day. It seems like, oh, it should be easy to do. But getting all of those pieces put together to get that patient where they need to go is huge. And having the ability to have enough staff, enough ambulances, and enough resources to continue that is what needs to happen.